What's up everybody? Welcome back to How It's Done. We got another good one for you today. Today we're going to be showing you how to install a generator connection for a standby generator. Uh, if you live in the Houston area or an area where you might have hurricanes or freezing weather or something that might knock out your power, having a standby generator is a good idea. This temporary generator, portable generator, whatever you want to call it, um, probably will not power your entire house. It will only power however much it's rated for. So have someone who knows what they're talking about take a look at it. But this video is intended so that you know what goes into having this installed. So we've got our main disconnect directly above it. So we'll basically just turn it off here, flip on the breaker inside, plug in the generator, and you're good to go. You never want to run a generator while your main connecting to your uh, meter is open. I'm sorry, closed, because if you have this on, you're going to be backfeeding power through center point, and you could run into some issues when the power comes back on. So do not ever, ever, ever do a generator with the main breaker on. Here we go. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get this panel cover off, Then we're going to pop out one of the knockouts in the bottom, cut a little hole in here and drill the hole to the outside so that we can run the wire through the wall and get that to the outside box where the generator is going to be connected up. Alright, so we got the panel cover off. I can see where the wires feed through power supply for the entire panel. Uh, the mains feeding in. So what I'm going to do now is go to the other side, drill a hole through the brick underneath where the main is and see where this pops around the wall. We'll knock out our Little knockouts here, whatever corresponds with where this comes through. So let's go to the other side. All right, so we're on the other side. This is their main disconnect, their main breaker, right here. So directly beneath this is where I'm going to be putting the generator hookup box. So I've already marked out and drilled where the anchors that hold this in place are going to be. So now I'm going to drill a pilot hole right here, drill this through, see if it'll go all the way through. If not, I might need to use a longer bit, and we'll know exactly where we need to cut our opening on the other side. Alright, so we got our drill bit in there. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Perfect. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. Coming out pretty much straight below the panel on the left side. So we'll knock out one of these knockouts here. Cut a little opening for a box here so that we can put a blank plate on it. And should be good. Cutting the opening here makes it a lot easier to maneuver the wire in the wall, feed it up into the box. So, highly recommend it, and you'll end up with just a blank white plate in here, so not a super eyesore. Alright, so I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, but we've got the wire coming through there. And we've got it coming up out of the panel, so I'm going to actually put the breaker down here, separate from the rest of them, so that it's clear it's the generator breaker. But this wire is also going to have to be made up up here for the neutral. And then the ground will be made up over here. So what I did was I got 6-3 wire, meaning it's got three insulated conductors and a bare ground. And I got 5 foot. And the reason for that is because you always want to have at least 3 foot for making stuff up in the panel. And on the outside, I wanted to have at least a foot, depending upon how it worked. And then I knew this was going to be just on the back side of the wall. So I had just another foot for that. So sometimes a lot of people can measure and say, oh, well, the breaker's going to be at the bottom. I only need about two foot. And you know what? You end up with short wire. And even though you might have some extra, like you can see out here, we've got quite a bit of extra. But I'll be honest with you, if you're doing longer runs and, uh, you know, you buy 100 foot of this at $5 a foot, um, yeah, here it's like... 10 bucks of waste, but if you buy 100 foot and you're 2 foot short, yeah, go the extra mile, spend a little bit extra, get more than you need, and it will save you in the long run. Alright, so as you can see on this one, it's got marked where the red, white, and black wires are going to go. So I've gone ahead and stripped them back. You want to make sure and cut the extra wire loose, especially on the larger gauge wires. You don't have a lot of room to fold things up in there, and it is going to be a pain in the butt. You can see that this plug goes back a good inch and a half anyways in there, so you don't have really a lot of room to work with. 
um, the ground as you can see they've got it bonded to the front of this and then they've got a lead wire which will get made up to this where your ground coming from the panel is going to go so let's go ahead and get this hooked up get this together and we'll do the inside panel all right so as you can see we've got the two powers the line one and line two coming into the 50 amp breaker we've got the neutral connected up to the top and then back here we've got the ground connected to the ground bar so go ahead and put the panel cover back on put the blank plate on there and uh should be good so again never operate a generator with your main breaker on since the main breaker is not in this panel i couldn't put an interlock a lot of times they have interlocks that will prevent you from physically being able to turn them both on at the same time which is your best practice to do but in this case we're going to make sure this breaker remains off i've got it separate from the other ones so that it can be clearly labeled and identified whenever you just look at it at a glance thanks for joining us on how it's done and uh, we'll see you next time